Hello, people of the world. How are you guys doing? I'm doing quite well myself. So a few announcements. Let me see. Uh, just kidding. I have no announcements. Let's be honest. You guys probably don't care anyway. So let's get into today's video. I'm hungry to debunk some flat earth right now. Nothing else is really catching my interest these days. Here's a video I found randomly somewhere. Yeah. Hello, flat earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. I'd like to try and clear up some confusion about what is considered scientific observation and the difference between that and measurable proof which is something that we should have if we are to believe in the physically impossible spinning globe earth but we don't i don't particularly enjoy people who try to redefine what evidence means with their own definition and then twist it to fit their narrative i'm sorry but scientists are already pretty clear on what evidence or proof is and we're going to go by scientific standards not yours creationists also love to do this themselves especially ken ham and it just annoys the hell out of me we only have observations that are interpreted into a preferred hypothesis uh, or um, some kind of proof just because we can make a repeatable observation. Okay, so it seems that you have a problem with interpretation, not with the actual evidence. Should have said so from the start, because it's hard for me to believe you think direct and repeatable observation is not a form of evidence. Let's hear what you have to say then, I guess. So we can do something like take a ball and um, we could measure its size, which we'll do in a minute, and we can measure its weight. That is some kind of measurable proof of its size and weight, or its mass, if you like, okay? Um, but uh, concluding anything else other than its size and weight from what we can actually physically measure is simply an interpretation. Well, yes, it's an interpretation, but that doesn't make it less valid. For example, from the size and the weight, you can then calculate density. It's basically mathematics. We can use existing knowledge and techniques to figure out other properties of an object. In the case of density, there really isn't any other way to obtain that information other than from the object's size and weight. Similarly, for things about Earth, the stars, and the sun, we can conclude things based on clever techniques and previous knowledge we have of them, which build upon each other until we have our current model of the universe. There's no leap or faulty, quote, interpretation here. So, for example, if I just then, uh, we got the sun about to set over there. Now, of course, this, this ball is tangible. We can measure the size of it. The sun is intangible. We can make an observation about when and where the sun will appear, and we can make uh, predictions for that, and, and that would be maybe translated as being scientific. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so you're saying that if we observe when the sun rises and sets, maps out its pattern in the sky, and then made accurate predictions on when and where the sun rises and sets, that's not scientific? What in the world are you talking about? The pattern of the sun in the sky has been well documented centuries ago, and the fact that we can make predictions that are correct means that it is accurate and scientific. A huge, huge part of science is being able to make predictive capabilities. How we can accurately interpret events and then determine something new based on models is what makes it scientific. That's literally one of the hallmarks of science. So, here we have a ball that we know. We can know the measurements of, the physical dimensions. We can produce measurable proof of a guess that we make about this, this ball. The sun, is there any way of determining what is measurable proof about the sun? Yes, yes there is. Obviously we can't use conventional measuring techniques like we can with that ball because the sun is too far, it's in space and our depth perception is out of whack due to the distance. But that's not the only way to measure objects. So how do we know the size of the sun or the distance? It's very simple and requires a bit of math, but that shouldn't be a problem for you flat earthers, right? Now, there are multiple methods to doing this, and it has been calculated and recalculated multiple times in history, all of which gave pretty good precision with one another. For example, the first calculations to the distance of the sun was done via the moon. Using parallaxes, the distance to the moon was determined. If you don't know what parallaxes are, it's when you observe an object from two different points of view and see how the object's position changes in the sky. If you hold out your thumb and view it from each of your eyes, it appears in a different location. That's the gist of it anyway. Closer objects shift more than further ones, so by observing the moon from two different locations on Earth, the distance 
distance was calculated, but parallaxes can be used on the sun for various reasons, such as its intensity and overall distance away. Aristarchus was one of the first to calculate properties of the sun, and he did so using the distance of the moon, and a little bit of trigonometry when observing certain phases of the moon. During a half moon, you can assume that a right angle is made between the earth, moon, and sun. But that's a more outdated method, so I'll quickly present a more modern procedure here. At certain times, Venus can be visible between the earth and the sun, and by measuring the time it takes for Venus to pass through certain parts of the sun, scientists can calculate the distance between the earth and Venus, and then the earth to the sun. Due to Kepler's law, since Venus is closer to the sun than earth, it has a higher rate of angular orbit than earth. So we will definitely see Venus fly across the sky's visible range. Anyway, observing this transit from different locations on earth will yield different streaks of transit, and then measuring the distance between the two, we can use trigonometry to calculate the distance. NASA actually has a pretty good explanation on how it works on their website, which I will link down below. And I know, I know, you don't trust NASA, but math will always be the same. I assume you at least have high school knowledge and will be able to understand the mathematical calculations here. Anyway, knowing the distance, you can then easily calculate the size of the sun. This can actually be done yourself in your own backyard. Just measure some short distances and the diameter of a printed image, and you'll be able to plug in the numbers into an equation and find the size of the sun. Pretty simple. It's all just math, which is universal. Sure, you can say our measurements are some sort of, quote, interpretation, but the validity depends entirely on how the interpretation is done. If you're using proven mathematical formulas and concepts, then I'd say it's pretty robust. We can make predictions about where it will be, we can make observations, and we can even observe that uh, this tiny ball here, here will, will block off the sun. <laughs> but it doesn't mean anything, does it? It doesn't mean anything about the size of the sun because we have absolutely nothing to base it on. Yeah, see, if you don't have the tools or knowledge to perform simple mathematical calculations, then there's nothing else I can do for you. By your logic, we wouldn't be able to know air pressure or the speed of a car because they're based on, quote, interpretations, aka mathematics. There is no measurable proof of the size and the distance of the sun. You know, we even know the mass of the sun. And you know how we know? Easy, we can calculate the mass of anything using gravitational laws. First, we find the mass of the Earth. Here's the equation. Just have any object of known mass, measure its gravitational force, then plug in some numbers, and you get the mass of the Earth. Then, using the mass of the Earth, we can do the same thing with the sun. Plug and chug, and we get the sun's mass. Again, basic mathematics. Of course, I can see you guys calling into question the gravitational equation here, but that is a mathematical law that has been proven. Well, perhaps that's a topic for another video. Yeah, it's, this is an observation. We can make an observation that this ball will block off the sun. Doesn't mean anything. It's just perspective and angular size and all that jazz. But uh, we don't know the, ang the size of the sun. We don't know its angular size for us either. Yeah, really simple. You know, for someone who says a lot of we don't know this and that, you flat earthers sure make a lot of claims about the earth and the sun. If you're satisfied with the we don't know answer, then don't make outrageous claims on the flat earth model and the sun. It's that simple. Distance to the sun? Okay, we don't know that. Then how do you know it's localized? Position of the stars? Okay, we don't know that. Then how do you know it's even there? What if it's super, super far away, but it's dim due to the distance? By extension to your argument, there are plenty of claims you guys shouldn't be making. Here's another observation. A candle which is right in front of us and of course we can make it appear to be the same size as the water tower over there all right now if we know what a candle is we know its approximate dimensions and uh, we know the distance etc then sure we can make some calculations and we can call that some kind of uh, measurable observation yeah but uh, we can see just from doing something like this that uh, it is all open to interpretation. No, it's not open to interpretation. That technique you said, how you can use the size of the candle to calculate the size of the tower there, can actually be mathematically done. We just need to know the angle of the two sides of the candle from your eye, the distance, and we can calculate the diameter of the tower. If you want, you can then go and verify it. Go measure the tower directly and see if your calculations were correct. And if it is correct, then we know that the equation is accurate. You know, we've actually already done this and know that's reliable. Earth and we're told that it has a certain mass and uh, density and this is what causes gravity. Can we do this to the Earth? Can we weigh the Earth to confirm the, the model? Of course we can't. So we, we have no measurable proof. Really? Well, can you actually prove the mass of that ball? Can you prove that the scale works properly, that it's calibrated correctly, that the instruments inside measures it accurately? Things aren't just proof whenever you want them to be. Let's just accept scientific standards, is what I would say. Anyway, that's the end of this week's video. Kind of a lazy one, since I've gotten a bit busy with some IRL stuff. I would like to thank Fireshard, Shere Khan, and Elia for being awesome patrons. I'll see you next week for a new video.